Hello Year 12 Chemistry students, this is Mr Nicholson and this is a f our first of many videos that will be covered in Year 12 Chemistry where we are going to go through the theory content of the HSC Chemistry course. Now in this first video we are going to talk about polymerization and that's going to include us talking about polymers, polymer the polymerization reactions and plastics. Before we get into this, what we need to do is talk about some key terms. Now, polymers are large molecules that are made up of smaller building blocks called monomers. These monomers join together through covalent bonds to form large chains and other structures. Polymers, polymers themselves fall under the, ca the category of molecules known as macromolecules. Macro meaning big. Alright, and so macromolecule meaning big molecule. Polymerization itself is a chemical process. Now I say process because if we were to look at this as a reaction, it actually is a series of many separate reactions. Now, monomers, what happens is they will react together and join to form a chain of the polymer. Now, if we take a look at our diagrams down below, we've simplified the polymerization process where we are representing a monomer as just a Z as you can see just here and they react together and form covalent bonds together to form the chain just there. Now as you have noted in year 11 chemistry there are many ways of representing chemical equations in a slightly more simplified way to to actually convey information in a more compact fashion. Now, quite often you will see a polymerization reaction written in the form shown here, and that is where we have N monomers forming a polymer chain that is comp comprised of N repeating units. If we were to look at the range of polymer products that we find in our, our lives, what we would actually note is that even if we just considered plastics by themselves, there are many things that we come into contact that are made out of polymers and ultimately have an origin from crude oil. Now, looking at this, we can see in the picture shown here, we can see synthetic rope, we can see CDs, we can see plastic cutlery, all right, some obvious choices like our water bottle, these are all plastic products, all right? And when it really comes to it, all of these have an origin that is found in crude oil, all right? They're all produced from, from ethylene or a similar monomer that, that is ultimately derived from crude oil. Likewise, many of the other products that don't have a plastic origin in our lives still actually have a starting point with crude oil or they are manufactured using fuels from crude oil or even in the case of um, materials that may be manufactured using other fossil fuels there's a transport aspect to shipping them to a shop for purchase. Now some things we should just establish about polymers in terms of the language we're going to use in year 12 chemistry we are mainly going to be talking about what is known as homopolymers these are polymer chains that only have one type of monomer. Now, as it happens, we've done a lot of chemistry and a lot of development into polymers, and we actually have a range of other types of polymers. All right, perhaps the most notable of these are copolymers. These are polymers that do have more than one type of monomer. Now these can exist as a repeating unit where it is one monomer A, then monomer B, or they can exist as block copolymers where you have all of one type of, po of monomer that is then bonded to all of a second type of monomer. And this can have a range of effects on the physical properties of the polymer. Now, in addition to that, if we were to take a look at the plastic materials that we use every day, what we'll note is that there usually are only about six common commodity polymers 
that are made from petroleum that are used in many products. No, those include polyethylene, polypropylene, poly, polyvinyl chloride, polyethylene tetraphthalate, polystyrene, and polycarbonate. All right, and what we will do is we will actually focus primarily in the notes on polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, and polystyrene because they are named specifically within the HSC syllabus. And of course, it is worth pointing out that polymers themselves are not only made from crude oil. We also have biopolymers. In fact, all life involves some form of polymers. And by that we mean proteins and, and, other, and other, other large molecule structures within the, within the um, physical makeup of living creatures. For example, celluloid is has a repeating structure based on glucose, as does starch, and that is found in plants. We have various proteins and peptides that are found in us and other, other animals that, are, that make up the structure of themselves and also work in a variety of different functions. We also have a variety of man-made polymers that fall under the banner of biopolymers. And the kind of interesting thing about biopolymers is that they actually are able to degrade. And they're able to break down in a much faster time frame in, compar in comparison to polymers that are derived from crude oil. Now, we will get into that later in the second part of the HSC course, but for now, all right, I'm just going to make mention of two examples, which is polylactic acid, a polymer that is used primarily in 3D printing, all right, that is a big one for you HSC students to actually remember, and in addition to that, in addition to that, there is also biopol a degradable polymer that is primarily used in dissolvable stitches and that has a number of applications in the in the medical field in addition to also being used as biodegradable cutlery now any discussion of polymers must discuss the building blocks that make up polymers these are monomers. These are small molecules that contain functional groups such as this double bond shown just here in ethylene. Now, in the HSC course, in this first section of the course, we are going to focus on three monomers. These include ethylene, vinyl chloride, and styrene. Now, each of those names are the old names for those monomers. There are more modern names that are used on occasion, and for example, ethylene is also known as ethene, and that is how you will have encountered that molecule in the Year 11 chemistry course. We also have vinyl chloride, which is known as chloroethylene, and styrene, which is known as ethylene benzene. Both of those names have shown up in past HSC questions, so just take note, you will need to know the both names for each of these monomers, all right. However, there is value in knowing these older names, such as ethylene, vinyl chloride, and styrene. And the reason for that is because these, mo these monomers and the polymers that are made from them will often be referred to using these old names in secondary sources. So it is a valuable piece of information for you to internalize and make sure that you remember those are old names for some of these molecules in the chemistry course. Polymerization reactions and the formation of a long polymer chain can occur via a few different ways. In the HSC course, we are going to talk about addition polymerization and condensation polymerization. These are two forms of polymerization. This video is only going to discuss the beginnings of addition polymerization and for this first part of the course we are only going to focus on addition polymerization condensation polymerization comes into um, play in the second focus point of the HSC course and is referred to several times at, in later topics now in our first example shown on the slide just here this is an example of addition polymerization here we have poly ethylene being formed from 
ethylene monomers, which is what I've just circled just here. What's happening here is that the double bond in each of these monomers is opening up and forming a longer polyethylene chain when they react together. All right, and the devil is really in the details just here. This is a bit of a simplified way of looking at polymerization on the current slide. And we will get to those details in a later video. Now, I really need to mention this at this stage. Just remember, in chemistry, we like to have simple ways of representing chemical reactions. And one thing that is worth noting is that drawing long polymer chains can in many ways be quite difficult and it can also be confusing because you might draw a chain that has 10 repeating units in it but that chain could be 50,000 monomer units long. And so what chemists do is we often talk about polymers using a type of shorthand chemical reaction. Now this is where we talk about having n monomers, where n is a large number, and we also talk about having a polymer chain, shown just here in the blue circle, that is made up of n repeating units. And this is just a simple way of representing a polymer reaction, and something you just need to be familiar of, because you will see polymer reactions represented both as a long chain and also represented as or a section of a long chain to be realistic because there's a you're probably not going to have 50,000 monomer units in a drawing of a polymer chain and we're also going to see representations of polymers as the repeating unit to n to to n where n is a large number now that's all for this first video for the HSC chemistry course. All right, I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to ask them in class or in the comments down below. Thank you.